today we are going to talk about how, um, what is bias in machine learning and why is that important for geospatial applications. Uh, I usually hear about bias when we speak about facial recognition, uh, but you say there is some bias uh, problem as well regarding geo-information. Exactly. So if you look at biases in machine learning, uh, a lot of people are worried about it at the moment. So you mentioned the example of facial recognition, which recognizes people of certain color uh, better than others, or, for example, uh, job application algorithms, where women are not... Um, selected as often as men, simply because also historically sometimes there were less women than men uh, for certain job applications. So we can see that if you look at society, there are very many examples of how machine learning can help a lot, but also how sometimes it's propagating biases and prejudices that we don't really want to happen. So uh, because of that, there's a lot of regulations coming up and also a lot of societal concern. And one of the things that we are trying to do is to understand, okay, with geospatial algorithms, we're also using machine learning techniques. So we kind of know that the same biases will be playing a role in our own work, but we need to better understand how and how big the impact is so that we make sure that we can avoid this problem before it becomes a very big societal concern. Okay. And what, what do we know so far? So what we know so far is that, um, so biases happen, of course. So biases tend to happen, for example, for reasons such as the representation. So when we make machine learning technique or when we make an algorithm, we select examples um, of what we are looking for. But sometimes examples of one type are more common than examples of a different type. Mm -hmm. And so then in the algorithm, once we run the algorithm, we see the same differences. So I, I have here an example that I wanted to show you, which illustrates the issue in geospatial applications really well. So in, um, in this image, you see actually the same image twice. It's a drone image. Mm -hmm. And on the left in white, you can see building outlines that were delineated by community members. Okay. So it is really people who sat there and were manually digitizing. Uh, we call it digitizing when you're kind of drawing the building outline on top of the image. And then on the right, you, with the yellow outlines, you see the results of uh, which were published online for free by a major software company a number of years back that said, okay, we have all the building outlines in Tanzania. And so when we compare the two, we can see that um, the algorithm doesn't work as well in the central part of the image. And in the central part of the image, we can see that the buildings are, are smaller and closer together, mm -hmm. right? Whereas if you look at, for example, the top right corner where the buildings are bigger, it works better. So what does this mean is that it looks like when we look at the image that the algorithm is not recognizing um, these slum areas, which are actually the parts where we see that the characteristics of the buildings are different, mm -hmm. as well as the more formal areas. And this is actually a really big problem because often, uh, if you think of emergency response, sometimes we don't have data or information of how many people are in a certain area. So if there's a flood, you need to know, okay, how many people are there? How can I distribute resources? Where do I need to send the help? Mm -hmm. But if th this data is changing, if it's like an informal area that I don't have data, uh, one of the promises is using AI data to say like, okay, we can automatically map it and at least we can get an idea. But if we see here, Imagine that um, this is actually happening in practice, and maybe when you are actually at the point of distributing resources, you're actually not taking into account the people who need it most. And so an application like this is an example of a bias in a machine learning algorithm, uh, more specifically for a geospatial application, that we're trying to understand better because it can have effects that we are trying to prevent. Okay, so again, people who, have, uh, who already have less will be more badly affected by exactly. this. Exactly. And, uh, well, I, I see in the image that apparently the, the, the machine learning algorithm likes 90 degree angles and bigger shapes. Um, is that correct? Yeah, indeed. That, that's a good point. Um, that it depends on the algorithm that is used, and I don't know the specific details behind this one. Um, but what you can see is often that the examples that were given to it tend to be more regular examples. So mm -hmm. um, when we train an algorithm, we often use a data that is more commonly available. So I don't know if it's the case in this particular algorithm, but for example, if you look at Europe and the Netherlands, we already have all the building outlines digitized. Mm -hmm. So it'd be very easy to use those as examples and to train an algorithm directly. Whereas in the Netherlands, for example, buildings would also be bigger and square shapes. So it's, it's probably uh, part of this as well. And the um, there could be also different aspects of the algorithm itself that prefer to have more regular shapes. Okay, 
So this sounds like a very big problem for the future. How mm -hmm. do we solve it? Well, uh, that's what we're working together on right now. If you look at from top-down, from a guidelines perspective, there are a lot of guidelines coming out from UNESCO. The European Union is also working on legislation, which might come out in the coming years, that say that every time that we use machine learning algorithm, we need to audit it for bias. Mm -hmm. So this is for all the applications, including what we are doing in the geospatial domain. And so one of the things that we're also researching here at ITC is to look at, okay, with this potential problem, what can we do to make sure that the algorithms that we are using actually uh, don't have these biases? So how can we check them for these biases? And how can we explain the results of the algorithm to different people who want to use it? Okay, and, and does this apply also for people outside of the, the uh, university or the academic uh, environment? So let's say companies using this for yes, other purposes. Yes, definitely. Yeah. So if the EU regulations are passed, for example, then every company or every algorithm on the market, with, on the European market, will need to be checked for it. So it's definitely outside of the universities. But I think, especially if we are looking at how to actually do the auditing and how to understand the biases, I think it's something that a lot of, um, especially researchers, are looking into, because we we still haven't really established the best practices yet in our domain. Do you want to be a geo hero as well? Then take the first step and click the subscribe button and then the bell button to always be the first to know when one of our GeoHeroes posts a new video.